So there's a the tutorial video from the, the developer of Bone Reconstruction Planner. This is about how I actually use it. So first you have to load the CT data, the DICOM files. So click the Add DICOM Data button and then drag and drop the folder containing proper DICOM files. And after clicking proper patient and the data set, click on the load button below. Now you can see the data loaded. I'm loading the uh, patient's mandible CT, neck CT scan as well. And now it's good to go. So now we're gonna do the segmentation. So go to the drop down menu, find segment editor, click it. Then choose create new segmentation as from the drop down menu below. Name it as mandible. And choose proper source volume and then press add. And you can see this segment added. Now you're gonna click the threshold button and set the proper range. And when you click on the show 3D button, the skull shows up. And to separate mandible from maxilla, choose the eraser on the left. It's mostly connected on the dentition and the bilateral condyle. So make a breakage by erasing at the occlusal plane and the condyle. And then click on the island button on the left. And choose split islands to segments option. Click apply. And you'll see the segment separated. And you can uh, just remove these segments you don't need. And now we're going to do the same thing for fibula. So go to create new segmentation as from the drop down menu and name it as fibula. And then choose proper source volume for the fibula. Click on add button and the segment is added. And now we're going to do the thresholding. Click on threshold window, double clicking on the small window, it will enlarge and then you drag on the bone it will automatically set the corresponding threshold. And you can also manually manipulate the thresholds as well. So here I set the threshold to include the arteries as well. And on the right leg, you can see all three arteries there, but on the left, the patient's missing one of the tibial arteries. So we're gonna use right fibula. Click on the show 3D button, black shows up. To separate the right fibula, we're gonna make a breakage on patient's ankle and the knee by using the erase tool after that click on the island button choose keep selected island option click apply then the patient's right tibia and fibula is left and to separate the fibula from tibia you can use the erase tool and erase the connected portions click on the island button again choose split islands to segments option click apply then the fibula and the vessels and the tibia is all separated and to save the data go to file menu save data and click all the components and choose proper folder and click on the save and all the data is saved so now we're gonna load the bone reconstruction planner extension click on that puzzle like menu on the toolbar and search for the bone reconstruction planner and install it if it's not installed once it's installed, we have to load it. So click on the magnification glass right next to the drop-down menu. And when module finder window pops up, you search for the bone reconstruction planner and load it by clicking the switch to module button. Now we have to change the layout as well. So it is done as shown. Now you can see three windows, 3D mandible, CT scan, and 3D fibula. Now we can finally do the surgical planning. We choose proper segmentation for mandible and fibula. And click if the fibula is right side. We're going to place the mandibular curve as so. It doesn't have to be really precise. Now we're going to add fibula line. And first point distal, the next one proximal. I did it opposite here, but it doesn't matter. We can easily change it later on. And I'm going to add cut planes, the resection margins of the mandible. Place another one. And then click on the create bone models from segmentations. Something happens, but you can't see any cutting planes at the fibula yet. But after clicking update fibula planes over fibula line, you can see the cut planes at the fibula as well. And there's a transformed fibula segment at the mandible. And when you want to change the location of the fibula segment, you can change the fibula line 
or you can change the initial space or both at the same time. Then the segment is instantly repositioned. Now you can change the length of mandibulectomy just by moving the mandibular plane and you can rotate the fibula segments as well. And any changes made are applied immediately below at the fibula as well. And when you want to add a cut plane, you can click on the Add Cut Plane button and there will be another cut plane appeared on the mandible and the fibula. And here the uh, fibula segments are located kind of too distal. I want to make it more proximal. And what I'm going to do is I can change the initial space here and click on the Update Fibula Planes or Fibula Line. But whoops, it moves even distally. Then what I'm going to do is I change the fibula line the fibula line is defined by two points, so the program thinks that the fibula starts from here. So I move that starting point a little more proximal, change initial space a little bit, and click update fibula planes. Then the segments move to the proximal, like just like that. So you can fine tune your plans just like so. And when you want to flip the fibula, distal to proximal, proximal to distal. You can simply switch the two points of fibula line, click on the center fibula line and just slightly move the cutting plane. The cutting plane at the fibula is now flipped or switched. You see the cutting plane is brown and then purple, but it was purple then brown. You see again, it was purple and brown, but now it's brown and purple. The orientation of the fibula only has been flipped. So this bone reconstruction planner provides automatically designing the cutting guides. However, if you want to just export your STL files of the fibula segments and mandibulectomy mandibles, then you can go to the uh, data. Then you can go to the folders containing green sphere-like icons. Those are the models. You can right click, click export to file and repeat with other folders containing that dark green sphere icons which can be exported to SCL files and that's it